Hi folks, Dan the Wolfman here with a little video on this little powerhouse, the old Smith & Wesson CS45. This was the most compact series of the third gen Smith & Wessons uh, that Smith & Wesson made themselves. Um, and this one is short, relatively thick and powerful, a little bit something like myself. So I just felt like I got to get my hands on this one. This thing is six plus one, but as you'll see in other videos and as we go along, how I update it for modern carried eight plus one or even 10 plus one and other little modifications. So Smith & Wesson made this pistol between 1999 and 2006. Uh, there was the 4506, there was the 4516, which I'd like to get my hands on someday. Um, the, the biggest ones are really way too heavy to carry, especially carry two of them, unless you're a Denzel Washington, and you can take them off in between shots. But uh, this bad boy is only just shy of 24 ounces, 23.9 ounces. Now, originally Smith & Wesson made this in 9mm back in 99 in a blackened uh, version. Then they came out with stainless version, I believe, then in the 40 caliber CS40, and then eventually in the CS45, which you see me holding here. We'll go tabletop in a minute. This weapon is clear. I'll just do that now. DASA, traditional DASA with safety decocker. It has three safeties when you decock it. Uh, also has the magazine disconnect safety we'll talk about in a minute. Focus there. There you see the nice Chief Special. They brought that name back from their old revolver series, of course. And they brought that back to, you know, garner some of that attention that these are smaller for detectives or higher ups or off duty uh, carry. Um, there's the business end, pretty intimidating. And um, this mag's actually been shaved off. It came with a pinky mag, which I, I don't like, but I kept one of them original because it's just a little I can kind of get my pinky on it, but during recoil, it slips off. And so it really doesn't do what I need it to do because uh, I have an extra large hand. So that's what it looks like originally. So we'll go tabletop in a second, but I have tons and tons of rage footage. This video is a bit inspired by HR Funk. You might see in the background with his CS9, a great channel, HR Funk, the CS9. But, you know, I like my 45. If I got to go single stack, I'm going 45. Double stack, longer barrel, 9mm, okay baby. But um, anyway guys, let's go to some tabletop. Alright folks, so let's go on to the tabletop section. Don't worry, I have lots of shooting footage. Here's what this thing looked like originally. Two magazines. This one had the pinky base on it. As I said previously, I don't love the pinky base because I get extra large hands. So in recoil, it actually slide underneath. Doesn't really do what I need it to do. A nine millimeter, that's probably a different story. Or if your hand's slightly smaller. Beautiful etching and it's a little dirty. It shot 200 rounds last night and quite a few hollow points. Again, we got an empty weapon. Slide stop, safety decock, then you got to put it back to fire. This engages three different safeties. It also has a magazine disconnect. So let's look at the trigger pull first. Long but smooth, like a good revolver. Long but smooth double action trigger pull. But what these third gen, especially Smith & Wesson autos, what the Smith & Wesson autos were known for was this incredibly, incredibly short reset, which can make for very rapid fire, as you see in movies and TV shows and Reservoir Dogs and all over the place in media. Of course, the 45s were known by Vic Mackey in The Shield or the, the full size um, or 
by Denzel Washington, but those are like 40 ounce, 42 ounce pistols. So again, this one's just 23.9 ounces, and let's look at that short, short reset yet again. A little take up, but it's right there, very crisp, light, single action. And double action again. As you saw there, the safety de disconnects the trigger. Love it or hate it, they also had a magazine disconnect. Now you can remove that by taking a spring out underneath the sight, but it also had the magazine disconnect. These do eat you up. They are functional, but you can see, uh, you know, they, they nick the skin. Make, it needs to draw some blood every now and then. But functional and very pretty pistol. Of course, shave it down a little bit, sand that, and I like that even better if I have to go to ultra concealed. Uh, looks like it came with this rod and brush. Here's the original sights. Came with a super, super tiny dot front. Very small, like 0.123. Very, very, very small for a pistol because they just adopted from the 4506 to 5 inch to 3.75 and the 4516. There was a four and a quarter inch barrel limited version and uh, then to the three and a quarter inch barrel here. Very, very tall rear sight. For accurate shooting, this was good, but personally I found that it was slow to first shot because it's hard to find the small dot in the middle and this is very obscuring for uh, you know, home defense, CCW, searching left to right, uh, etc. I don't like sites that obscure too much of what I need to be looking at, which is the deadly threat. So this has been updated with the XS, XS dots, night sights, both have tritium in it. In the second part of shooting footage, you'll see I use that. But I don't like six plus one. I much prefer 8 plus 1. 8 plus 1 works much better for me. Carry the appendix or on the hip or 10 plus 1 on the hip. So, a powerhouse. Only 3 and a quarter inch barrel. Good for CCW. And with a little bit of updates, you see that it can be made to a modern carry weapon. So I really enjoy it, and uh, let's go to some shooting footage now. Little extra recoil springs and spring guide. This one had no wearing down of the Palmer spring guide. Some people complained about that. So I picked up some extras just so I always have them. But this thing was meant barely shot at all, it seemed like. And if you ever need to pick up one of these, or CS9 or CS40, you look to see how much wearing down there is on the Palmer guide rod. Uh, if there's not a lot, it hasn't been shot a lot. If there's a ton, it's been shot a lot. And just know that you have to pick these up before they stop being made. So pick up the extra recoil springs and the guide there. One more thing I wanted to point out, guys, is that as you see on mine, blackened and dual-sided safeties. It seems like 99 and maybe early 2000. They were coming with just a single-sided safety and a plastic rear sight. Uh, mine's a later version, a uh, much later version, and had the much better metal rear sight. So early version, single side, only strong or right, you know, right-handed person's left side of frame. Safety decogger with a plastic rear. Um, if that's something, be aware that those models are out there. But if you find a good one used, I think this is something very good to uh, pick up and will serve you well. I had a friend that said, hey, update this. This is a friend's weapon that he's letting me borrow so I get used to DASA and I update it to modern carry needs for him um, and make sure that it's working and everything like that. So we made a little deal and it's working out great. All right, let's go to some shooting footage. All right, guys, function testing the updated mags. This one's got the OEM spring, an eight-round pro mag with the OEM spring. Function testing that. Ten plus one topped off to make sure that extra pressure's there. Function testing the mags. Uh, most of it's uh, got federal brass in it, and there's one round of blazer in it just to mix things up. And uh, going from a new relentless tactical 
um, inside waistband holster I'm carrying appendix. Uh, liking it quite a bit so far and fits this kind of harder final. <laughs> Okay, all his own hits. That's good. Let's see if I. All right, guys. Second mag with the OEM spring function testing. I did top it off. So the original sights, like I talked about earlier, is obscuring. It's taking a while to find that front sight. That's kind of why I wanted to switch us switch out to the excess sights. Hopefully, I can time. Function five and lock back. So that's the first time testing this one. Same thing with the uh, Wolf Power. Let's try the other one. Function fine didn't lock back, but function fine. All right, I gotta keep testing these 10 rounders before I trust my life to them. All right, 10 plus one. I think it's the one that didn't lock back left. Not sure there. Another 10 rounder. Head shot at the end, and rest was easy. And a function, and it locked back. Wolf plus 10, 8 rounder, 8 plus 1. Function falls. Other than that. OEM spring. Nice. Alright, guys, the 10 rounder that was a problem actually functioned 10 plus 1 fine that time. That one de definitely needs to be vetted. I put a Q on it for now. Questionable. The eight round OEM springs seems to be running the best so far. Now it's a hollow point function test. Um, and uh, I got in two eight rounders, I'm gonna do a ball in the chamber. I got three HSTs, two 30 grand, followed by two rounds of 185 Golden Saber, followed by three rounds of, I believe it's 230 uh, XTPs. So hollow point function test, gonna do that twice, one with each of the OEM uh, marked mags on these two targets here. So there we go. Hey guys, what's the problem, man? Hey guys, back off, please. Back off, damn it! All right, hollow point function test, good so far. All right, I was worried about more about functioning than hits, but I got four in the smaller A zone for this type of target. Three in the heart, one on the spine, upper thoracic lung, and just one that's too low but to hit the spine. Over here, three A zone. I like that. I love that, and uh, I don't really like that though. It is center of the spine, so that's still pretty good. But some stuff don't really do a whole lot. So that's good. That's functioning the other mag. So the same way. All right, functioning the other OEM Mark mag the same exact way. Hall point setup. Can I help you guys? What's up, guys? Can I help you guys? Back up! Fine. Lock back. I think I locked back last time too. So, OEM mag are good. 
Hey guys, welcome to trying to update the old Smith CS45 to a modern carry gun. And what we're really focusing on right now is this XS dot sight. This is the standard dot night sight. It's got tritium in both. So basically that would be your sight picture there, except 25 yards you would dip the front a little bit, or you would just focus on the top of the site instead of the dot where you want the bullets to go. So intuitive for up close, especially on a short barreled, smaller, concealed gun, these should be very fast intuitive sights because you won't be reconfirming the rear sight before breaking the shot. You just put the dot on the target and bang, 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 the dot is where the bullets are going to go. So I'm gonna take my first shots with this. Uh, if you happen to get any jams in the gun, it's not the gun. The guns function fine with the original OEM magazines. Uh, it was uh, pretty much mint, shot very little. These are eight round pro mags. They function fine with the pro mags and the 10 round pro mags. But I have since swapped out um, springs to see what I could do. These two have OEM springs in it. This is one I marked as a trainer, though it has functioned fine. I always felt like this one might potentially give me a jam, though it has not yet. Um, this one has a plus 10% power spring. The first time running it, it had issues. It caused a couple jams. Since then, it's been okay. These also have plus 10% power wolf springs. So OEM springs, Pro Mag spring, plus 10 wolf spring, plus 10 wolf springs. So if I get any jams, it's because of springs. Uh, as far as holsters, I am working from two inside ways relentless tactical holsters. Uh, today, or a Safari Land 105 uh, basic holster uh, on the hip, which I just got, so just breaking that in. So guys, let's see how it goes on the quest to the third gen Smith and update it for modern CCW carry. Thank you. All right, guys, first shots with the XS. See how I did. Not bad. All right, so my first shot in DA was right there. I got two more there, there, there. So I pulled one a little left and I started to drift a little low and left. Obviously, that's me, not the sights. The sights will work great as we get up to speed. You'll see that they're very intuitive. But for realistic for carry gun, the access uh, dot sights. And I'll, I'll look at the F8 sights probably later from access. And in full disclosure, Access did provide these sites, but I've been interested in them a long time because I think they're most intuitive for most common practical distances, which is, you know, one to seven yards. Lock back, all your mag. I mean, Pro Mag with the OEM spring. You can see the hits in a second. All centered, perfect. All right, so besides the three kind of lowish here that I did earlier, that's all pretty centered and a good fist. So uh, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. I think I'm pulling a little left today. Hopefully I can get that figured out in a second. All right, going to go for some headshots now with the training Mark Mag, which is the original Pro Mag. Dot in the box, lock back, training mags been functioning great. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, so I got six in the A box, so that, hey, that's good enough for self-defense. It looks like it, it shoots a little left for me, but that might be just how the sights are set, and because I'm left eye dominant, but a right hand shooter, I might just not be shooting that great today. Uh, but, obviously, that's it's pretty good. So right now I'm just kind of getting used to the sights. I put them farther out now. Going to see if I can get nine in the uh, head. And this is with a plus 10 power shot. And locked back. Everything's locked back. So I uh, know the plus 10s are even doing better now that I got some, uh, you know, a couple rounds here. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
those three counts. So five in the A box, actually, because it broke the line. Well, this one's questionable. Four or five, A zone, couple left, couple a little high, but a full head would be up here. So that's still punching them about T box, cross the eyebrows would be right there. Uh, that ain't bad for the distance that I'm shooting at, which is a lot farther than most CCW defensive gun uses. All right, 10 plus one again. Good grouping. All right, good grouping. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, nine, ten, eleven were in the previous group. So everything there is really good. Zero, mini B26. I'm a little bit lower in the heart, maybe. Back, that's good. And those are in the heart, not quite as tight a group, but still pretty good. All right, can't really complain about that. One, then I said I would lower it down because I saw they were getting up there. So I lowered my aim down a little bit. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, that ain't bad. Uh, pretty much I hit the spine with each one, almost each one. But uh, all were heart hits. So, hey, that ain't bad for the access dot on that. That's pretty good. More up close and personal now with the access dot. Gonna do some Mozambiques. Got the 10 round magazine in. If I'm carrying appendix, I'd really got, have the 8 round magazine in. Still got 11 in the gun right now. Got tough, dude. Got trouble, man. Back up. Tough, dude. Hey, man, what's your problem, man? Back up, dude. Let's go again. And I ran out. Most of my hits were good. I got one though, and one of the headshots was a little far, too far right. But other than that, not bad. All right, let's do some more Mozambiques with the excess dot. Good. On the upper thoracic and headshot nailed them right below by the nerve. Please back up. Hook. Good. Headshots are right on. Upper right on. All in the heart, lung area, actually center on the spine and heart. There we go. I'm starting to use two sights. Here we go. Hook. Headshot perfect. I threw the second uh, and the double tap in the high right, still in the A box, but but nicking them by the uh, maybe the artery, maybe the lucky, maybe the collarbone. Uh, headshot right in the eyeball. Um, so just the second shot I took there was off, locked back, perfect. Everything's functioned perfect except for the 10 rounder I got marked questionable. Isn't locking back, but that's also functioning perfect. So I'm clearing everything except for the lock back on the questionable. All right, guys, let's go against the knife again, up close and personal, about three yards. Uh, got nine in the gun, so I'll do three Mozambiques. And uh, awesome targets from targetsonline.com. Here we go. Jump the knife! Good, upper thoracic hits, and right below his eyeball in the tee box. I like that. Let's go again. Drop it! Shooter! Drop it! Boom! Walk back, perfect! Let's look at my nine shots. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those are a little too far out, but still pretty good. Seven, eight, nine, nine shots, all good. Actually, both hands, both hands, but left hand uh, offside. Pretend there's a robber coming in there. Picked up that excess dot. Nice. 
And uh, two upper thoracic and one I dropped low, one I dropped in the belly, which sucks. But that's why you put the off in sometimes. All right, guys, I'm going to show you another reason I do like the access sights, the access dot sights, is because I like to use a modified car position uh, for surgery, especially if I'm going up and down stairs. I've practiced my house a bit, going down the hallway. You don't know which door someone might come out of, whatever. So if you have to do searching, I like the access dots for having this in for uh structural support, the elbow into your ribs, and I'm here scanning. So I'm scanning over the sights. Instead of the sights, a lot of sights really obscure your vision. as well the white dots in the rear, whatever your eyes are focusing on, instead of what they need to be focusing on, looking for the threat. So before I take the here, I'll try to see if this is right. I'll show you what I mean. I rock this over here, and the... The dot, I just look at the dot whenever this appears. So if I'm searching, and boom, a threat comes out with a gun, a deadly weapon, I just have to get the dot where it needs to go. Yeah. So I'm room searching. I'm searching. I'm, maybe i got to clear my house. Okay. Okay. All right, let's see how I did. Not bad, not bad for, you know, the uses. You're not getting precise accuracy. But I got three in the heart touching each other, four in the heart, five nick in the heart, six in the lung, seven in the lung, eight nick in the bottom of the lung, and only one shot that wasn't very good uh, down here. So there's my nine hits. I was at, I don't know, probably five, six yards. You can get pretty good hits from that John Wick style cars. Um, position and I particularly like it with the access sites so if that's a technique that I want to adapt the access sites are really good for that all right guys CS45 let's finish up with a nine round match plus 10 power spring if I hey man back off dude hey dude man I don't really want any trouble Back off! Guys, I'm going to show it because that's reality. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, zippering up in. That's pretty common in the mag dump. Seven, eight, a miss. Definitely not happy about that. Nine, headshot. But you start up a thoracic and you kind of zipper as you pull the trigger. But I think that's realistic because a lot of people, that's going to be deadly threat. You're just going to mash it. Obviously, I tracked off and then I corrected myself as the barrel was riding in recoil.